Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of our Minecraft Xbox One Survival Let's Play. Today is episode 55, and it's been about a month since the last episode, and I do apologize for that, but I've been incredibly busy over the last month trying to prepare for different things going on in my real life. So, I'll show you a couple of the things that have changed in the last episode. There's not too much. There's a new addition, like a new tunnel. We've got a little part on the river that's been added, and a lot of trees. So, let's take a look then, shall we? And also, I spent a little while moving and getting rid of all of the chests that we had in the world that were spread out with random bits of junk in, and I've condensed them down into this one house, which is down here. And we've also item-framed them all, so we know what's in them. For example, all the random tools that I had lying around, all the bits of food, a mob's dropped chest with some stuff, and I've obviously filled up all of these down here as well. This chest has become very full, so has this one. This one's got the end stuff in with it, lots of grass, things like that. And obviously this one is the important one because it shows how much hardened clay I've actually got left. I know it says terracotta, but it's hardened clay to me. And these two I think are still empty. Yes. But we haven't done anything else in the end. This chest just has random bits of armor and the enchanted books left over from the old fishing station that used to be in that house there. That... Uh, chest I think is still actually there because that would just be a pain to move all of those fishing rods and enchanted books It makes the area look a lot cleaner. I will give it that So we'll move on from here So obviously I've removed the auto furnace array that we had here and we now actually have just a chest full of glass and Stone stone is mostly the cobblestone that I was farming up that I found that I didn't really need them too much We've also still got the skeleton spawner down there. I haven't done anything with that either because I promised you guys I'd do that on camera and I'm sticking to that. But that's not going to be this episode. So we'll head on up here. You will notice, first of all, there are a lot more trees spread about now. And it, basically, it's what finishes this area off. It makes it look so much better. I don't have any bone meal on me now. Let me remove the map out of my hand because... Having that on the entire episode will look a little bit stupid. Haven't done anything in here. Like I said, I haven't really be had too much time. I've been playing Destiny 2 in my free time. Plus, when I have had time, I've done little creative projects like this. Finished off this. It's not much. It's like a too high wall which runs to the edge. Reshaped the river a little bit so it flowed a little bit better. We still haven't really done anything else with the drop point there. I'm going to adjust this wall, we need to rip this down to build something that actually matches the structures we have in this world, because it doesn't match anything. So we're going to tear that down and we're going to go for something of our own making. We also have a lot more trees up in this area as well, a crafting bench. Just, no, cannot have a crafting bench there. We've also got this reshaped river, which has been hit, sat here for probably a month or so now, which I haven't really shown it off. Uh, but essentially what I've done is I'm going to create two bridges, one to the right-hand side here, which will link up to there, and one to the left-hand side, which can link you over to this side. Kind of breaks up this central point right here, and we're also going to be removing this when we get a chance, and we will be lowering all of this by one block. But that's a little bit of a faff to lose the slabs that we have right here. But I do think it finishes it off quite nicely. Don't they need to be full blocks? That looks a little bit stupid to me, that. Are they supposed to be like that? Is it only three wide across the entire thing? Let's just hover over here. No, they're all five. I think that's just a mistake. That should definitely have some slabs there on those. One, two, three, four, five. I don't actually have any of that wood on me, so let's ignore that for now. So that's everything that's on this side of the world. The opposite side of the world is we'll fly up above and see if you can spot the changes. You won't be able to because they're all in the back area over here with this tunnel. And we also want to build a new bridge today, which means... Oh, I forgot all these chests up here. Oh, so basically I... <laughs> well, yeah, I forgot these chests up here. That's a little bit annoying. I guess I've got a lot more stuff that I need to sift through and move anyway. Is there any wood here? That's the key thing. I don't think we have... We have uh, some bones, though. So when we are growing trees later on, we'll be okay. I'm going to steal all that. I will borrow the gunpowder as well. We're going to make ourselves some more firewood with that little bit of gunpowder while I'm here. We're going to be making our bridge, by the way. Our bridge is going to sit right here. It's a tiny little bridge, and it's just essentially going to have some lips on both sides. But it's going to be able to run this minecart track, which is in here, which I'm not sure if I've shown you this or not. I can't remember if I have, but essentially it's a looped circuit, which has the minecart running down here. The one that's looped up to this um, lower point. That's not far in the water. 
Let's use our rocket to cross over. Slap into that and there. It's the one that covers this minecart that's down here. I wonder how far away it is. Let's just wait a minute and see where it actually is. There it is. So yeah, it's essentially it's going to reroute itself off in that direction. And I know it works because I've tested it already. This thing is doing okay. As you can tell, not really been in the world too much. It is generating stuff slowly enough. But I don't really need too much more. Unless I have a farmer villager that I'm really pushing to get stuff on. So that's where we're going to start off today. We're going to be off up there building. And we're going to try and get a little bridge built. And get it linked up to the main track system. So we're going to go and see if we've got any spruce wood. And we haven't. We're going to have to get some spruce saplings. And we'll have to go from there. First of all, let's just double check we have any saplings here. We do. So let's take them anyway. And we'll grab a lot more bones than we have in our inventory currently. Let's go down here and let's hope that this chest does us a favor. Uh, not that I'm seeing. I'm seeing a little bit of spruce planks there. Uh, there's some slabs. Actually, I think there's enough here with what we've got. I don't need the fences, but I'll... Uh, I can leave them behind. We need to go make ourselves some more fireworks before we run out of stuff. So let's grab nine sugar cane. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Let's grab two more... Go oh, there's two. There's three in here. Sweet. So now what we can do, we can go over to this crafting bench. It's still on the classic crafting screen. Do that. Grab ourselves this. Oh. That. <laughs> there we go. Nine of that in there with nine gunpowder. And make ourselves plenty of rockets to last us another episode and a bit. After this episode, once we've completed this part of the track, we're going to continue with the track, I think. What we'll do, we're trying to plan out a couple things at a time here. But I want to get this world functioning very quickly now that I've got the, uh, what colours everything needs to be. Like, for example, this is the yellow track. And it doesn't actually work with yellow at the moment. I think this is still set up with uh, dirt, for example. Which I think this dirt would take you right anyway. So... The yellow, tr the yellow junction is a little bit funny because it has to be yellow to turn right, but also yellow to stay. It's, it's essentially the turning for this area here. So coming back out, should that be yellow or should that be white? Because it... No, because it wouldn't be white because the, one, the white tunnel takes you off. Oh, no, because the white should be white because essentially if it follows the same direction as white and white is the, uh, the north track line... So maybe that is a white track uh, thing here. So when it comes out of our bigger, newer storage room, which we're going to be doing at some point. So I might as well show you what I've done up here because I've made this little adjustment with a new part of a stairwell. Because it lined up really well when I pushed it out here at the top of this castle gate right here. So we're on top of this area that we've got right at the back behind everything. And essentially what we're going to do eventually is we're going to continue the track design all the way through this cave. We're going to head up there. Let's see if we can head up there. Crash into the birch tree. We're going to get it wrapping around up here. Essentially from there, we're going to wrap it through here. Up the back. It is very dangerous up here. In fact, I have not... Okay. Got a zombie there. But yeah, this is essentially the bottom... Well, it eventually will be the castle. But obviously we haven't dug most of it out yet. We have half of it. But that's by design of this area. This thing also does need some bookcases to finish it off as well. It looking a bit bare. It needs a little bit more texture beyond the jumping puzzle which is inside of this. Remember, this is a slight copy of something else that I have seen before. So, let's jump down here then, shall we? Let's just do a bit of a U-turn. Let's do a bit of switching around in our inventory. And let's see if we can make a good looking tunnel. Well, it's not really a tunnel. It's more of a bridge. But the bridge has to be functioning as well. Which is the tricky bit. So obviously the middle part of this actually has to be, so let's probably try and do this. Hmm. Um, I'm wondering how this looks. This might be a better option. If I do that, because then at least it's not in your face. And I think this will look incredibly stupid if we do it the other way. Because we need to make the middle part flat. So at least if we bring it up on these blocks, we won't be able to see it. This is also going to get annoying very quickly, having to run back and forth to double check it. So if we slab that there, we could bring these two up. So what we're kind of trying to do is create a curve effect. So these are going to be three high. Do I want a three high thing there? Considering we've stared it. Or what do we do? We do, an, do a right way up like this and then slab it. That looks a bit stupid. It does because it looks blocky. 
What we have to do is put slabs just on these blocks right here, which is why trial and error is a thing. So that's what our bridge will be. It's nice and simple, nothing too fancy. It's just enough that we can get this little tunnel uh, on the here right in front of me, essentially. I'm trying to think as I'm building, never a good thing for me. Now, do I want to do anything else with this? I know it's going nighttime. It looks, in fact, it looks really bad. I'll be honest, that looks really stupid. Hmm. I can't really get away with doing the old pattern that I'm used to doing because it doesn't work. Um. That's a little bit awkward. Uh, I don't know what to do, actually. This is a little bit tricky. <laughs> I'm trying to copy something like this. Which would bring it out to... Or maybe we could do that. Let's try and pretend on the inside. It's the problem of trying to hide the fact that we need it to go up two blocks in the middle. Which means keeping that slab there, even though I don't want to. I mean, so what we could do is bring it out like this. And then we could raise those two up and leave that slab at that height there. And I guess we could do it on the same on this side. Let's destroy these. Because we're going to have to put full blocks in the places of where some of these slabs are. So, let's jump up. Well, this is the problem, is everything's out of sync. Is Do I raise them up to these points here? In fact, I'm doing that. <laughs> this is trial and error with a bridge right here. This is a little bit uh, amusing. I haven't really built stuff on camera for a while. Which is why things look and tend to be a little bit silly. So, we're going to go with three stairs. Followed by three slabs. Followed by nothing. I'm staring at this, just looking at it going, that's wrong, why are you still trying that? That's what's going on in my head at the moment. I mean, if we did this, that's too high. Like, if that's our rail track, you'd definitely notice it way too much. What we need to do is just keep a nice and simple flat bridge, I think. After all that, we're going to go with this. And you know why? Because we can. And then essentially what we will do to close it off is I actually have some stone with me because I'm going to hide it. I don't, I'm not really impressed with this, but I'm never going to see it anyway. And what we can do now, we can use some stone brick and we can funnel it like this. What we're also going to do is we're going to take out these three. No, what, um, I'm trying to think how I can get some like... What do you call them? The iron bars? If we sneak some iron bars here, probably put the three of them in like that. And then that should be okay like that, I think. Because that's just kind of like the overflow from when the water comes down there anyway. It's not really going to be much use. And then that means we can also take out this horrible part with these cobblestone fences. I've never really liked that at all. So let's break that. These are actually back to front on this side, I've just noticed. So let's just break that. Place that there. And we will finish with some stone in the sides. There we go. So the... It, it looks better when it's flat. It's really weird, but it's what we're going to have to work with. One, two, three, four, five. There's the torch on the bridge. One, two, three, four, eight. The next one's there. And that one should actually be there, not there. Aha. And then we'll place this back on the wall where it belongs. And that can't go there, but that one can go there. And we don't need that on the floor. Delete that. There we go. So what we will now actually have to do is reroute this. Instead of it going up to the top floor where it is completely useless, up here is there's no good. So what we need to do is take out up to here. That one's powered by that anyway. So let's take all of this out. Excuse me. And then we need to go up there in a second and get rid of it all. So let's grab the oak planks. Fill in the, uh, the floor above, because we can access that from the little bridge that we have. Now we need to use the chest that I'm so glad I didn't delete these chests after all that. Because it allows me to uh, dump off my inventory so that I can actually pick stuff up. There we go. Because I'm going to have a lot of redstone components here on the floor. Plus, I've also got this, which is the... Uh, this is the detection line, actually, for... It's for the stuff in the middle. I couldn't remember my words there for a second. But if this is speeding there, what we will do, we will put one powered rail in the middle uh, to either side. I need some more stuff. I'm going to have to put a torch under that, maybe. If I full block it and torch it, will that work? 
full block. Ah, aha! Yes, I remember why I wasn't doing this now. So then we break break this. If I got a, t did it give us a torch? No, it wouldn't have done because it would have been just redstone dust. So we take a torch. We'll make one anyway. It's not too difficult. There we go. We'll put the torch down under there. Put a full block above it. There we go. And then if we put this on top of it, it should power it. Yes. Okay, so we're actually getting somewhere now. We need to make sure that we don't touch that. We need to go and get ourselves a hell of a lot more track. But good job we have a lot in our ender chest. But it's a shame that the nearest ender chest is back at the middle of the world. So let's just break our head and fly over here. Land on a tree and then jump down. We have a... One of these is full of them, isn't it? Yes. Rail, 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 rail. Oh, we only, only, only need a stack, I think. There we go. This rain's annoying. Let me sleep. Is that a creeper behind me? I wasn't too sure. I feel like I'm talking really quickly today. Let's just let the weather clear up. There we go. We'll go back over here. So now that we've got our bridge in place, well, all we need to do now is connect it up to sort of somewhere in this area. Because what we want to do is we want to eventually link up these two tracks together. Um, I want to just bring this down a block, I think. Oh, it's actually a horrible colour underneath it. Let's just do that. I want to just hide the ramp up. I want to just sneak it in there like that. And then I can blend it in on the other side if I have to. Let's just do that. There we go. One, two, three, four, and then it's an up incline there, which might stop it. So what we'll do, just to be sure, we'll break that. We've just placed it, I know, but we'll place a redstone block there, which is a waste, I know, again, but it's fine. There, let's just chuck that cobblestone out. I need to go and dump some more inventory off in these chests again. There we go, let's do this, that, and that should be enough. I only needed to pick that one cobblestone piece up anyway. Do I really need anything else on this bridge to make it look a little bit more textured? I mean, I could try uh, some slabs. I think that's what we'll do. It's just to take the texture away from this flatness. There's quite a bit here. I only need six. Let's just take that one off. There we go. In fact, I'm going to roll with this just because it's a bit more texture than what we're used to seeing. And that's just the roundness of the house with that gap there. That's fine. So yeah, that is pretty much it. We ended up building a, a bridge that looks a little bit silly on the front. I think what I will do is just to break the texture up a little bit is place them like that. Okay, so whilst I took a little bit of a break there after we finished off that bridge, it was getting to me a little bit that Minecraft was just being frustrating today. So we're over here underneath one of the redstone mechanics for where this bridge piece actually works. And I've been doing a little bit of thinking. So, I wonder how we can get the pieces of stuff that end up in this hopper after it's been used from the hopper to somewhere along the track line further down. For example, let me get on top to show you guys what I mean. Let me just loop around. That was really high. So, essentially, what I'm trying to say is every time you activate this junction, it will take the piece out of the minecart. But what we want it to do is if it's a specific item, we want it to put it back in the minecart. So essentially this is the white wall one. So what we want it to do is it to accept the white wall through it and then it to go underneath. And then all of a sudden you will end up where your minecart goes past the junction and then say it picks up a white wall over here. Say there's like a dropper, uh, not a dropper, a dispenser under the minecart track which produces the item which has been taken from the hopper over there. Now that requires a hopper chain, which the only issue we've got with the hopper chain is we would have to make a dropper elevator because we're one block down on where we should be. Now this isn't too tricky if I was pulling it out of here, but with the way that these work, you have to drop it down a block to make everything function. So as you can tell, it registers in, not this hopper, it's essentially, it's the, it's the other hopper, but it has to face into this area here, which means the it has to face the comparator, so you have to drop it down a block. But we want to get it so that we can get a line of hoppers essentially down this curve, 
because it means that we'll be able to transfer the item along this curved part of the track without any issues. But that means creating a little bit of a sort of dropper elevator. It's only going to, it's only going to go up one block. All it is, is got to be... Let's see if I can get my redstone out here and try and show you what I mean. So essentially, we've got to get from a hopper, which is uh, pointing face down into the floor like this, we have to get it into a dropper on the block. Uh, it's on, The dropper has to be on the same height of it. So I wonder if we do something like this, like if we move the other hopper to face into the dropper, like I think that might be our best chance of doing it. Because then I think all we'd have to do now is have it so that if the item is detected once, I think it spits it out. So essentially, you would have to have, I think it's literally just a comparator and a load of redstone. Let's just try it. So we would have to have a comparator facing out of our dropper. Doesn't matter what side that's on. And then I think all we have to do is this. Let's just try it with a repeater, but I don't think a repeater is necessary. I think this literally is all you have to do. Because we've used this before. Why did we use this? We used this in uh, the skeleton farm. But that, you obviously have to set these for a little bit of a better timer. So say something fell in here. It immediately disappears. The only issue is locking the hopper. Like if I redstone torch this hopper now from a block. Not that block. Um, I need to have it on. Let's do it the block underneath. Let's do that. So that I can at least see it. Where's my. Uh... Oh shoot. I didn't mean to do that. Haven't used path blocks too much in this game. Because they're pretty disgusting if you ask me. I don't really like them. Um, inventory space. Again, inventory management is one of the one awful things I keep forgetting. That's another reason why I want to get a uh, chest set up. So, that's how the system is at the moment. It's got a torch underneath it. You can kind of see it a little bit. Let's see which is the easiest one to spot. Let's do the one above our head here. So, you notice that the hopper has a torch on it, which makes it a little bit more awkward to move. But if we put the dropper there, say on that wooden block there... We would have to have our comparator either there or there, or even we could do it there. It's trying to get the signal out of the comparator without expanding it too much further beyond this curved part of the track. That's the only issue, is getting it up there. So if we put something in this now, it stays in it. So essentially what we would have to do... Does that ever unactivate? This seems like a silly thing, but... It cycles through it, doesn't it? Like, it locks it at 18 items, which means when it goes off... Ah, okay, so it should... Should have enough time where the... I don't know if it's enough time that it lets it through this hopper and it'll get to the dropper, but if it does, this is literally all we'd need to do. Because... Oh, freaking dropper. Oh. Are we doing this right? Ah. Uh, you see, you see the mistake? Uh, it's a dropper. So I need the second repeater in there because it's only a one barred signal because it's a single item. There we go. Okay, I'm not stupid after all. But then if I put... Obviously that torch would turn off every so often with a different item in it. So I wonder if we just temporarily set up that down here. So that's a repeater. Let's do a little bit of testing here. So I'm just going to just use this for temporary storage. Grab one of them. I'm going to just place that there. So we're, we're literally staring above my head here. So torch, block, repeater, block, dust. Block, block. Dust, dust. No, it's dust comparator. That's comparator. That's hopper. Okay. Comparator. And hopper. Aha. But obviously this has to face into your hopper. Otherwise, it doesn't work. So we have that one redstone dust in there. Let's place the dirt block in there. We have to place a lot more than just a dirt block though, don't we? We need to place four items right here. And then we need to place 18 items there. What we have just shown there is that the system works. All we need to do is push the dropper right next to it, and then we could get it up a block into a hopper chain. Also, we could literally, I think we could do it this way as well, if we just put two ticks on that. I think it works the same way. So we try it again. Yes. 
it is because of the two tick delay. That's the only reason why. If we wanted to compact this down, we could take that block out maybe. It's the only issue of rotating the dropper. So that's all we've got to do. It's really simple. I didn't realize how simple that was going to be. I thought it'd be a lot more awkward to do it. So let's try next episode to get these all four linked up properly. Like with droppers that send them down chains and things like that. So I'm going to leave this here for next episode. So we've got a bit of a reference point. Because this is the system that we're all looking at. It's a one tick delay on that thing there anyway. But essentially as it picks up the wall, aka for example, our oak plank here is the wall. Oh, okay, we can't compare that down. That's duh. <laughs> Me being silly there. I didn't realise it was going to link back to the comparator again. But it, knowing it works is a really, real, real good bonus for us. So let's just throw everything else that I don't need back in there. And that will be pretty much it for this episode. It's been a little bit mishmashy, but I wanted to try and make some progress in a couple areas in this world. Now we've looked at finishing that bridge where we're going to connect the tunnel later on. But we need to get this system up and running. As soon as we get this working, we know what colours need to be on our tracks. Uh, our track selectors essentially which means we can run the track selectors with a hell of a lot of hoppers it's going to be very expensive for me and that is why we have ourselves the iron golem farm right here the self stacking one which means we can repair it and set it up just to start running over and over again it needs quite a while to get going this thing but when it gets going it is one of the fastest and most reliable 32 far, uh, village iron golem farms we've got. It was a really great thing to follow. I do recommend you guys building this one yourselves. But as you can tell, I haven't really had it on too long. And I've got two and a bit chests worth. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you've all enjoyed. And I guess I will see you all again in the next one. Bye bye.